I created my own club in Spain and in just our first season, we secured promotion to La Liga. We even managed to sign David Silva and Julian Araujo to help us compete. But the level in La Liga has been staggering. We saw that as we got destroyed by Real Madrid. And after just two games, we're in the relegation zone. And with deadline day approaching, time is running out. If we don't improve our squad by then, we will face relegation. Here we are, guys. Create a club in Spain. The Spanish adventure continues. So far in La Liga though, things have not been good. Two games at just one point, will we be battling relegation? Well, if we don't improve our team, probably yeah. Let's see what you guys are saying. No surprise, relegation team. Marcos Rey should sign for a club with real potential. Hold on, come on now. Marcos Rey ain't going anywhere. We're not ready for La Liga, not gonna lie. This is coming from Para. By the way, who asked for your opinion, Para? You're a fraud yourself. We're gonna transfer list you for that. Come on now. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. Just as predicted, no surprises, fraud club. Come on, guys. This is a bit too much. Okay, a bit of optimism here. For sure, y'all got to be aiming for 15 to 10th place because if you keep playing like that, European football is clearly not for next season. Well, guys, I think regardless, aiming for European football, <laughs> I don't think that's an option this season. My goal is to get somewhere near top 10. If we can do that, that'll be insane. But before we even think about top 10, we need to try and get our first win. So far, guys, I think we've done a great job strengthening our team bringing in David Silva and of course Julian Araujo but as I said before if we don't end up signing a new center back I really think we're doomed and we're probably gonna get relegated thanks to of course Gatorade sponsoring us and New Balance as well we're rocking with a budget of about 14 million that's what we've got left which honestly should be enough to bring in a new center back the question I asked you guys in the last episode was whether we should go for a young center back or someone with a bit of experience a veteran and looks like I got my answer from you guys in the comments. You should look for a youngster for the centre-back position because Alonso is 32 and getting old. For example, Angai Nyanzu from Sevilla could be a good option. You know what? You guys are right. We've got one veteran centre-back in Alonso. It doesn't make sense getting another one. But let's take a look at Tangai Nyanzu and see what's up. Okay, the overall is definitely looking good. 75. He's got good stats all round. Whoa, that acceleration though is a bit sus. My man's quick with 72 sprint speed but he's he's slow to get up at that top speed but we'll work on that he looks like a no-nonsense defender if i'm being honest maybe that's what we need and his contract is expiring and you know i love those but i reckon because of how good he is he's still gonna cost us 12 million 10 million somewhere between that but i've also realized that we've got a lot of players whose contracts are expiring and i think first we need to renew them Oh man, this is bad. Our transfer budget is going to get destroyed after renewing them. I don't know if I should give Montero a new contract, guys. He's 33. We've got Sanogo. I think it's better to give him a better contract. And yeah, that's what I'll do. 12,000 per week, four-year extension as well. Let's do that. Sedan Montero, I'm afraid it's going to be your last season at the club. I think Villar definitely deserves a new contract. Oh my God, the wage hike. Are you kidding me? We're not paying him that. A two-year contract. And remember, since we're in La Liga, if the the player asks for a release clause to renew the contract, we have to put one in because I think that's the way to keep it realistic in Spain. But what I think I can do is try and increase that release clause to the maximum possible. If we can get him on a 28 million release clause, I think that's good for Villa, but he's only willing to do 21. No, I, I kind of accepted by adding another 10,000. Am I stupid? Oh, anyways, that's the release clause on Villa. Let's just hope no one pays it. To be fair, now that I'm getting a bit greedy, a 21 million for Villa would not be a bad deal. We're signing this one. There you go. Villa signs the deal. This guy, Para, you know we're selling him. He doesn't believe in us. Out. He's fired. We'll renew Medina's contract as well. Oh, that release clause is bad, but we'll do it. Uh, Garcia couldn't care less. Juan Jimenez, though, is a big one, and I need to try and get his release clause to the maximum possible, because he's the next Sergio Busquets. And I do not know why in his name he's got a capital A. It just makes no sense, but uh, we'll We'll just run with it. Okay, after a bit of negotiation, if we can get him on a 25 million release loss, that'll be awesome. There you go. And I think let's bump up his wages. Let's double it to 20,000. I think that's decent. And boom, the next Sergio Busquets re-signs with us. Okay, with that, I think we've sorted out the contracts we needed to sort out. But what does that leave us with?
it. Yikes, about 12 million. I'm telling you, signing Nianzu, even with his contract expiring, is gonna be really tough. First, though, we've got a game against Mallorca, and this is genuinely our chance to get our first win in La Liga. And also, as I said before, I'm gonna make Sanogo slowly a starter. So, for this game, he's starting ahead of Montero. The rest of the team, we've got David Silva starting, Julian Araujo in there as well. Let's get our first win in La Liga. David Silva striking in first time, and I almost thought he got his first goal for us there. That would have been special. Alonso, oh, that's a proper challenge. Old school from our captain. Marcos Rafe, he's got the pace to burst through, and by the looks of it, he does have tough angled off for him. Marcos nope. Rafe strikes it in a big save from the keeper. Ray. Clever ball for David Silva, but that right foot was the worst thing I've ever seen. One thing I'll tell you guys, Julian Araujo's pace has just made defending a lot easier. He's able to keep up with all these quick wingers, and that's really helpful. Oh, lovely ball in for Galliano. It's a massive chance. He needs to take it, and Galliano with his La Liga goal. Things you do love to see. 1-0 against Mallorca, but we need to hold on to this to win the game. No, no, no. We might concede. That's a big save from Mendes. Okay, come on. Let's not concede from a corner. That's more like like an old school defending from the captain. Oh no, Alonso's been slightly exposed nope. there and Mendes forced to make the save. And that's full time. Oh man. Towards the end, Mallorca really pushed, but we secure our first win in La Liga. Although it was against the newly promoted club, so I'm not sure how much we can take from this. All right, guys, we better get to work. We've literally got four days before it's transfer deadline day and we need to try and complete the signing of Nianzu. Oh man, our next game in La Liga is going to be against Barcelona owner all the more reason to complete the transfer remember guys we've just got 12.2 million left plus we need to pay for his wages signing bonus and whatnot so we need to try and get a good deal out of this i'm gonna start going a bit low with 9.5 million they've countered with 10.2 which honestly isn't too bad yeah i know there's a big sell-on clause but i think that's pretty reasonable you know let's still try and be stingy 9.8 is gonna be my counter and that's actually worked that's brilliant negotiations and if we want to survive in La Liga, this is something we're gonna have to do. Remember, guys, every signing we make while we're in La Liga, we're gonna have to put release clauses on these players. So I'm gonna try 50 million as a release clause. And of course, that just wasn't gonna work. But okay, maybe 40 million at least that gets us a good return on our investment. But even that's not working. Let's try and do 35. I wanna get the release clause as high as possible. Oh, Nianzu knows what's up here. Let's let's just try 33 million and get done with it. At least that works. In terms of contract he will get a wage bump let's give him 20,000 per week we can afford that and that is enough to sign him and so guys i've just realized in a way this is our first proper signing you know a youngster with potential a player who we're looking in for the future we've just signed nianzu and this is incredible look at that left with only two million after completing that transfer but honestly i think we've done a stellar job bringing nianzu and over the course of the season i think he's gonna play a big part and so transfer deadline day comes to an end Oh, and by the way, we just got an offer right outside the window for Para the Fraud. I'm just going to sell him. He's of no use to us. Let's get the cash and maybe we can use it in January. Would you look at that? Just one win and we're now ninth in La Liga. But that could change very quickly because we're facing Barcelona. As much as I like Alonso, I think for a game like this, we need a defender with a bit more pace. And I'm putting Nianzu in that starting 11. Sanogo is going to start as well. But I really don't know if we're good enough to compete with Barcelona. But let's see what happens. Oh no, Barcelona within minutes have gotten in behind, but Rafinha, that is a stinky touch. We got away with that. Honestly, Barcelona look relentless. They're coming at us from everywhere. Mendes again with a save. I've only just realized Julian Rajo is playing against his former club here. I doubt he's got too much affection for Barca because he didn't really be there for a long time. So hey, he should be fine. 20 minutes in and we haven't conceded. And I think that is an absolute dub. As here's David Silva looking for Matias Sula. What can the Argentinian do? Looking back for David Silva. Oh, he put it wide. His right foot is so bad. Barcelona with Pedri, and it's not easy playing against this Ferran Torres cutback. I just couldn't do anything there. We just got carved open. It's halftime, and Barcelona have dominated us. There was one player in this first half who was trying so hard, but nothing was working out. It was Marc Osri. He's a former La Masia talent. Of course, he wants to perform against Barca. And I think the media articles from last season's cup final, where people were calling him a fraud and happy that Barcelona sold him, all of that's maybe playing on his mind. Oh no, Rafinha's through. 
who shoots and scores. We're 2-0 down. Ah, it's making it even worse. And I'm sure Marcos Ray is frustrated. Guys, we need to try and push for maybe Marcos Ray getting a goal. Because ah, it's, it's, it's playing on his head. That's why he's not able to score those goals in La Liga for us. Everybody's been calling him a fraud. And he can only prove them wrong by scoring. Oh, Barcelona through once again. Mendes keeping us somewhat in this game. Full time. And not only have Barcelona destroyed us. Marcos Ray again blanks against his former club. No goal for him. This time, it was not like he was injured as well. And of course, this is what the media needed to rip apart Marcos Ray. The worst talent in La Masia history. He can't compete in La Liga. Look at all these articles, man. Oh, I know he's yet to score a goal in La Liga, but trust me, he's not forgotten how to score. He did that so often for us last season. I'm sure. Give him time. He'll come good. But yeah, we need to go on some sort of a streak of securing points because so far just one win and that two against the newly promoted club this ain't it to survive in la liga we're gonna need more and i think one strategy could be just focusing on the youth academy as well and getting players through so far the academy is tragic the only player i like is janko jovanovic luka maric is just too low rated to have an impact for us in this series so i think i'm gonna let him go and we're gonna find more players in the academy like janko okay so we've got two million in the bank we can definitely do some scouting projects so i'm gonna to send Kepa Soler to Spain because he's from Spain. Hopefully that helps him find some talents and let's see if he can get us, uh, I don't even know what to, what to find, maybe a technically gifted player from Spain and we'll send Hector Ruiz, our good scout. I'm thinking let's go a bit different. Maybe we'll send him for three months to Morocco and see what we can get from there. But this is of course planning for the future and in that future we need to be in La Liga so let's get some results. Well meanwhile Para has been sold and that's good uh, yeah goodbye. Next time think before not believing in us on Twitter. We have Real Valladolid in our next La Liga game and I think this is winnable. Oh, would you look at the space down that left side, Sergio Galeano, who's really up nope. his game in La Liga, but he can't finish that. We missed our chance and now Villarreal have a simple chance to score. Araujo is not tracking back and we're 1-0 down. The horrendous streak continues in La Liga for us. And that's full time. That's yet another L we've taken. And the struggle for points continue as we draw against Bilbao and another draw against Hetafe. We just can't win to save our lives. Guys, this is, this is really bad. We're 17th in La Liga right now after seven games six points on the cusp of relegation if things keep going like this. Our next game is against Celta and thankfully they're even worse than us. They're bottom of La Liga but this is now a golden chance we have to take and win. We really need to see Marcos Rey step up man. All those news articles and everything. The only way he can shut everyone up is by scoring. No, 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 no. We could concede and we've somehow not survived. Are you kidding me? They're the worst team in La Liga and they still scored against us. Marcos Ray linking up with Galeano. Chance for Ray, but it's just not clicking. No, we're going to concede again. Mendes with a good save and we're so lucky the rebound came off the post. Brilliant, guys. We've now conceded a penalty towards the end of this game, nope. which Mendes miraculously saves, meaning we now have one last attack before the end of this game. Galeano with the ball right now. Massive chance, and Galeano scores. Marcos Ray didn't have the confidence to go on his own. Laid it off for Sergio Galeano, whose level this season has been exceptional. We're back on level terms with Celta. And sadly, that's how the game finishes. We couldn't get a win, but honestly, we fought back, saved a pen, and got a point out of this. We'll take that. Anyways, the good news is we've got some youth scout reports. But they're really terrible. Like, no one remotely impressive. Okay, wait, that may have just changed. We found Mustafa Ahmed, 73 to 94 potential. He looks amazing. He's valued at 1.3 million already. Finally, we found a really good player and he's from Morocco. Definitely signing him up. That's our first really, really good youth academy player after Janko. Oh man, that's decent. He's 61 rated being this young. That is really good. A right back as well. Yo, that, that's perfect. We'll, we'll put him on a development plan, work on him, and maybe next season he'll be a part of the team. This is what we need to do. Slowly but surely build our academy. We may have just found the next Hakimi now that I think about it. Literally. But all of this will be a complete waste if we can't figure out a way to survive in La Liga. We're playing Betis. Let's get something out of this. Uh, we just get destroyed.
destroyed. But hey, at least Marcos Ray got his first La Liga goal. Finally, guys, we play a game and we actually win. That is such a relief. Now we need to build on this. Ooh, we're playing Eibar and this is a chance for us to get a win. Oh, Matias Sula is completely broken through and free on goal. Chance here for Sula and he does not make a mistake. Lovely finish. Well, Diamond will take these 1 0 wins, man, all day, every day. Finally, guys, at least temporarily, we're out of the relegation threat, although by only three points. For our next game, we're up against Levante. And would you believe it? They're 19th. Remember, they were the club that we were fighting with for promotion last season, and it's kind of good to see them struggling. Especially considering how Jason Marquez, remember him? Former S2 GFC player. He left us, betrayed us, and went there, and now he's in the relegation fight. I've got a minute. He's not in their team what's going on here wait a minute what jason marquez after helping guide levante to promotion secure the move to sevilla that is actually crazy fair enough i think we made a real mistake in judging his ability and talent because he's now 79 overall and i kind of regret letting him go wow i don't know how he's done it but that hopefully means getting a win against levante should be easier okay maybe not because we've just conceded a penalty <laughs> this time maybe Mendes couldn't save it. Oh, but we could have a chance here to get back into this game. David Silva's weak foot. Uh, it's letting us down. Oh, Juan Jimenez sees that run through for Marcos Ray. Come on. The pace is lacking and Ray is just getting bullied. And that's full time. And I can't believe without Jason Marquez, we lost to Levante. We're only just outside the relegation zone, man, with that result. And guess what? Our next game is against Sevilla. We're going to be facing Jason Marquez. This time, he's at an elite club and we're just struggling to survive. We need to sort our team out. We need to get back to scoring goals. Ray needs to step up. David Silva needs to show his experience. We need our defense to do their job as well. If we can't figure things out, I'm afraid we're gonna get relegated.